Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tosh Customs and today we'll be reviewing my custom Mezco cyberpunk themed hitman. Um, I called him the arm of the Crimson Dragon in my post and that has to sort of do with the lore that I've been building around the cyberpunk world and I'll be honest I don't have his story completely set yet so um, I probably won't explain it here but the idea is just that he works for a corporation and he is one of their like top lieutenants so he he is very skilled and he is you know extremely deadly and so um, I hope I pulled off that like a very intimidating feel with this guy and so we're just gonna dive right in um, I think he I think he looks very clean but there are some interesting choices that I had to make with him and so originally I wasn't gonna film a review and I ended up deciding to do one just because I didn't want to sort of, I guess, like leave this stuff undocumented. So, um, as always, we're going to take a look at his accessories first. So I'll pop off his other head, and then we'll get right to it. I'm going to scoot my chair in real quick. Sorry if you hear squeaking. Okay, so we're going to start off just talking about the hands. He has two fists on the figure already. The other hands he, have, he has include the gripping hand, a gripping hand, for the sword, he has a pair of those, set those off to the side. He has a pair of trigger hands, trigger finger hands. Um, once again, a pair of those, so we can set those off to the side. And then he has a pair of like relaxed and neutral hands. And we're gonna set those off to the side. All those are from the Netflix Punisher Mezco figure. And I decided to leave them unchanged and I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, moving on to his weapons, here we have his rifle, what I consider to be almost like a sniper rifle or maybe but somewhere between mid and long range. Um, this is from the Star Wars, I want to say, darn, now I'm forgetting, but he's from Rogue One. He's the guy with the convertible pistol to rifle, so yeah, you can actually still take it all apart if you wanted to. Um... For my design purposes, I didn't feel like I needed to take it apart because that really wasn't the goal to give him a convertible rifle. But yeah, the function still stands. It's been completely repainted. You can see we have some like little red energy glow in there. The scope has been glossed out as you can see in there, you can see that shine. And so the whole thing was sprayed a matte black and then dry brushed with gunmetal and then dry brushed with silver and then some detail areas were hit with gloss black, like also the deep crevice inside right there. You can see a little bit of the shine in there too. And, uh, the paint job persists on the other side. So yeah, so that's his long range rifle. Also, we did put gloss in the barrel and in the little flashlight. So there you go, so we got that. Um, I'm gonna go to the pistol next. This pistol, I believe, is... I think it's from Titanfall, I might be wrong. If it's not from Titanfall, I got it in a weapons lot and I have no idea where it comes from, but I loved the little logo insignia thing in there, that like little three, you know, that circle split into thirds. I thought that was pretty dope. And uh, I just like the whole overall aesthetic of this because it looks like a normal pistol, except, you know, slightly modified, just a little futuristic, something just a little beyond classic, maybe it was a normal pistol and it's been, you know, modded out by this guy. But I kept the look of the original handle, which almost has an ivory-ish color, as you guys can see there. Before, everything else used to be black with just this ivory. Um, I painted the slide like a chrome silver. I dry brushed that out and I included the hammer to be silver as well. And then for his underbarrel, what I assume that it's a laser, I did sort of that like energy glow red inside it and then the tip in the front is also red and i just think that adds some you know some interesting lore maybe it is a laser maybe it's some sort of laser cut cutter he can you know cut through metal walls or car doors with who knows but i thought that was pretty cool in a fun little fun little design addition i realized as more and more as i design characters you can leave some things up to the imagination and it makes them that much more interesting if everything has a super logical explanation, it might become boring 
or just a little bit, you know, you, you, you can get too in-depth is what I'm trying to say. You can get too in-depth and you lose sort of the wonder of the world. And then I also painted the magazine silver as well, and you can see it there as it sticks out a little bit. And then also for just the like little viewfinder, I also painted that red up, up top right there. So we got that. Setting that to the side, the next thing we have is his SMG. Nothing special about it. Um, I left the grips black and the magazine black just because style, style, in a style for stylish design reasons. Oh man, I couldn't get that one out. Um, I also added some gloss black in there and then, you know, in that little slide area and then also in the scope on either end. And so I sprayed it all black and then I just painted this upper area silver and I think it turned out pretty well. So I think that's really fun. I just thought it would be interesting if sort of like the upper part of the gun was left silver and it was black. I thought it added some cool contrast. And then finally we have his katana. I did nothing special here. I would have painted the sword a little bit of a brighter silver, but ultimately I, w I had paint rub issues with the sheath, so I opted out and I decided to leave it standard. So here we are, there's his katana. Coming to the heads, um, I saw a lot of people commenting on my original post that he looks like John Bernthal, he looks like the Punisher. Well, that's because the base figure is the Punisher. Um, I decided not to mod the face too much because Bernthal just has an incredibly intimidating face. And so I was like, I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to leave the face as is. He doesn't need much. Um, some fun things I did do, though, as I raised the brightness, you can see that the left eye is actually um, has a red pupil compared to the normal black one. So he's got a little bit of a Terminator eye going on in there, if I can get it to focus a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me brighten it. There we go. That helps. He has a red eye in there, got a little Terminator eye. He's got some cybernetics and um, just battle damage, sort of scuffs on his, on his face. And he's got those cybernetic lines that run through his left side and then to his right side. Um, you know, just normal. I did, however, paint the hair a slightly different color. If you guys have the figure, you know that he is all black, just all black hair. Um, it might be hard to tell on camera. I'm not sure if it's picking it up. Maybe if I move it a little bit farther away. Yeah, it's just not picking it up very well. But you can see that um, I actually painted it brown and then I dry brushed almost like a brownish blonde over the top of it. And so in person, his hair is much, much lighter. I don't know how much of that is coming across the screen, but it is definitively lighter. I don't have any other heads, so I can't like do a comparison. But yeah, I did change the hair color, so it wasn't just like I painted his eye, you know, added a couple lines, and then I was like, I'm done. Coming to this head, this is his more cybernetic enhanced head. The hair is painted the same. And then coming here, I gave him a metal jaw. And we got some, if we zoom in, you can see we almost have like some skeleton like teeth markings on there. And I thought that was just cool. Just a little skull-esque, as well as some little bolt indents in there. And then to the eye, I thought this eye was really cool. We have matte black and then over the lens we have a gloss. It almost reminds me just a little bit of the matrix in there. And then the fun part was the figure has a scratch, like the base head has a scratch on the side of his head right there. And so what I ended up doing is sculpting a wire that runs into that scratch. So almost like you have, you know, he has some sort of like internal implant or maybe it's an external implant and then it runs into his head, and then it becomes like fully internal, and wherever the wire goes, it's all inside, under the skin. So I thought that was a fun little detail to put there, and I had to sculpt, and I had to sculpt so tiny to fit it in that scratch. It was such a tiny little wire um, to sculpt, but it turned out really well, and I really like that. I think it looks super smooth. As you can see, it just, if I can focus it, it just slides right in there. So we got that. So with all that out of the way, I am going to put the visored head on the body. And then we're going to take a look at the figure itself. There we go. Okay. So this figure is um, a, lot of, a lot of different components put together. And I'm really excited for how he turned out. Um, 
he originally started as me just toying around with the diabolic body I had off to the side. I had no plans for it, but I was like, it's a shame that this whole body is just wasted. And the reason why I was talking about having a diabolic body set off to the side was I used the handcuffs for my custom bullseye a while back. And then um, that's the only reason I bought the figure. I've used the knives, I've used the arm braces, but then, and I've used the diabolic heads, but the body itself had just remained untouched. And so I was like, there's gotta be something I can do with this. And so I was toying with it around. I was like fitting a chest piece. And then I realized that the um, Burnthal body is relatively similar to Diabolic in height. So then I ended up putting the, you know, Punisher head on the Diabolic body. I had to switch out the internal neck peg and then I was able to put on the head and it worked surprisingly. And so I was super stoked about that. And I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta see this through now. I, I think I have something coming here. So um, I ended up putting on a Punisher jacket. I ended up taking a one twelfth shot pants from their Snake Eyes figure, putting, giving him pants. And after that, I was like, okay, I need to figure out what to do with the arms. And so just over time, he started slowly coming together. So yeah, this, this arm pad slides, just has a tendency to slide off the shoulder. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. All you have to do is just lift up the arm and just sort of jimmy it forward and then slide it back down. The reason why it does that is because um, I didn't want to connect it permanently because this pleather material doesn't react well to uh, super glue, at least in experiences I've had with material like this in the past. So I opted to leave this shoulder pad a little bit loose and it'll usually stay up. And like when you shake, it doesn't come down, but um, you know, you can just sort of flick it off. So that's just a thing, but I haven't like when posing him and stuff, it hasn't really gotten in the way of anything. So we will start, yeah, we'll start, we'll start at the body here. So what we have right here is a Halo Reach chess piece and I actually took the knife off of, I believe it was an arm pad and I ended up um, sh um, shaving it down and actually pegging it in. There's a little port right here that is normally like a little comms line on the figure. I think, I believe it's the Jin figure. I think that's his name from Halo. Um, and I ended up just fitting the combat knife in there. Unfortunately, you know, it's just one molded piece of plastic. It's purely aesthetic, but I did repaint it. You know, it's got sprayed black and then it has some, um, some silver dry brushing detail in the sheath. And then the handle itself, I painted gloss black. This whole chest piece, I got a nice red fade between the red and the black. And obviously there's battle damage and the straps have been done in a muted gloss. And then um, some of the little clips and stuff, clasps maybe, who knows, uh, have been done in a chrome silver. So the whole underbody is the diabolic, ooh, that's too bright. Get that to focus, there we go. The whole undersuit is diabolic, runs all the way through, including the arms. We have a Star Wars figure belt on and it doesn't wrap all the way around the diabolic body. So in the back, there's elastic. It's just a little bit, it's, I don't know if I'll be able to let you guys see it. Yeah, you can't see it. We have an elastic band right there. And so that just allows it to flex with the body. So we keep all the range of motion. This pouch is from 112 shop too. Um, as well as these pants, which I mentioned earlier. Um, I ended up, when I had the pants all the way down originally, it looked really baggy and loose because obviously Diabolic is a very thin figure and so um, it didn't look proportional. So I ended up cuffing the boots. I just ended up rolling them up um, or the pants. I ended up rolling up the pants, cuffing the pants and it actually ended up looking really good. He gets a very ninja feel to him. He feels very fast. And so I just left all this the same. There wasn't anything to do there. These knee pads though are from I want to say Hit Girl from the KA movies. I don't want to say the word. Um, yeah, I believe it's from Hit Girl from KA too. And then the knee pads um, were just redone in a matte black. And then I hit the little inside divots with a gloss black just to create some differentiation. I think that's something that is sort of missed with gloss black for a lot of just other customizers and painters in general. Gloss black, you can just use it to add depth. 
I don't see too many people do it and it's not something you necessarily have to do, but I think it helps and I think it looks good. So then moving on to the shoulder here, this was a shoulder pad off of a different Star Wars figure, if I remember correctly. And all I did was obviously I popped it off and then I gave it a ton of battle damage. I cut and dremeled in all these like little bullet holes and just sort of scarring into the armor. And then after that, I painted it and gave it some wear and tear. So that ended up turning out really well and I really like it. You can see that he has like just some chips in it on either side and stuff like that. So I thought that was really cool. Um, this was one of my first times really doing like heavy, heavy wear on an armor piece and I think it turned out really well. I think it add, just adds some character. So now coming down to the forearms, what I actually opted to do was not attach them permanently and let me explain why. So first off, um, the diabolic peg actually holds the um, Sovereign Knight gauntlet arms pretty well as is and then the leather jacket just creates some extra tension so when moving him around I don't have a problem with these popping off. Now the reason why I ended up leaving these separate was I realized that I could pop them on and off with the jacket tension and because the Burnthal hands are just a little bit small for the Sovereign Knight gauntlets, it takes just a little bit of extra force. It doesn't stress the peg or anything. Thankfully, the peg is small enough that if, you know, you can see that it fits the hole pretty well. But it, but because the Burnthal hands aren't like a soft plastic, it doesn't pop off and on very easily. It takes a little bit of just oomph to it. And so I just made the decision mainly based off of the sheath hand. The sheath hand, you have to be able to get a really solid grip, you know, grabbing the arm from all sides or grabbing the forearm from all sides to pop the fist off. So if it's permanently attached to the figure, you wouldn't, it would be much harder to get that grip and be able to pull it off. You know, you'd be mangling the figure around too to get that force. So I opted to leave these removable so that it's much, much easier um, to switch out the hands. You can just pop off the arm, switch out the hands, reattach it and um, there's no chance of you making the sheath come off. There's no, you know, there's no chance of hurting any of the internal joints in the body, stuff like that. So that was just a personal decision. Um, obviously, yeah, I did sell the figure. So I'm actually filming this right before I'm taking it to the post office. But yeah, I guess if you don't like it, you don't like it. But for the, really just the safety of the body, that's a decision I decided to make and it works fine. I haven't had any issues. I always sort of like play test the figures a little bit. Obviously I don't put them through heavy wear, but I check all the joints and stuff like that just to make sure everything's smooth. And you know, it is the best that I can possibly make it. And this was just a choice that I thought would be good. So anyways, for the arm, you know, we call him the arm of the crimson dragon and literally he has a crimson arm. Um, I dry brushed some red over this and then did some gunmetal and silver wear on it. And then what I actually did is I came through with like a little needle and I scraped out all the cracks of the red so that the black out, like the black lines would still show through. And I thought that was really cool because, um, I think it's, it, you know, obviously it's super easy just to paint over everything, but I think having those extra detail lines in there, um, just brings out the plating feel, you know, sort of like this modular, you know, the armor was all like classed together, almost Iron Man-ish a little bit with these very smooth lines. So I wanted to keep that. So now in terms of the sheet, what I did was, it was, it was a really complicated process, but I took the sheet. I had to, this was from the Lady Deadpool figure. So it was actually fused to another sheath. So I had to crack them apart and sand a lot of stuff down, but we finally got the sheath. That was its whole, whole own ordeal. So if you don't want to do it with this sword, probably don't. It was, it's a lot of time, but I liked the size of the blade and how it fit in the hand. So that was, um, I decided to use it anyways. And then what I did was I just made a very general shape of the, you know, the metal, the metal arm, the metal bit that connects the sheath to the actual gauntlet. And so once I made that very general um, shape, I sort of just pressed it onto the arm and then 
adjusted it to the angle. Once I had the angle right, I let it harden, um, you know, connected to the arm. Once it was hardened, I actually popped it back off. So now it's just the sheath and the arm piece. And I use that time to sort of sand everything down and get, you know, a much cleaner cut on everything. And I think I succeeded in doing that pretty well. We got a clean cut. And then um, also, if you guys know, if you ever just sculpt anything onto the surface without, you know, sort of a peg or an indent to increase the grip and the tension, you'll know that as soon as you put any sort of force on it, it's going to pop off. So, you know, knowing that, that I only had a surface grip on the gauntlet, what I decided to do was, you know, after I popped it off, I super glued it back on. And then I sculpted these little plates on either side. And that just increases the, you know, grip that this sheath has. And so, you know, I've moved this around and it's really solid. It doesn't, you guys can see, it doesn't, it doesn't wiggle at all. So it's very concrete on there. And I have to make sure it was really concrete on there because obviously we had the hand tension. So I wanted to make sure this was a really solid construction. So putting that to the side, we also have the other gauntlet here, and he has another gun on this gauntlet. I pulled it off of a dead shot figure, and obviously it's been repainted. It's all matte black. And then we have some, so let me get that focused. We have some silver dry brushing highlights, as well as some gloss black and sort of all the little dents and crevices as well. This is strip right across here. Um, for both gauntlets, I cut off the little Batman gauntlet edge things. I don't know what they're called. I know there's a technical term probably, but cut those off, sanded those down. So it just gives a much more like smooth and streamlined look to the overall figure. And then obviously we have the hands again. This one, it's a lot, this side for the left arm, it's a lot easier to put the fists on and off without pulling the arm off. But you know, I didn't want it to seem selective. So we ended up sticking with the you know option to pop it on and off on both sides. Now. Coming back to something I mentioned earlier, the reason why I left the hands unchanged and I didn't want them to like match the black of the armor was as I was testing it, I thought that this ended up looking really, really cool. Just the black arm, you know, the black leather jacket to the black arm to the black peg, and then you have a skin. Sorry, I realized that wasn't in frame. Black leather jacket to the black arm to the black peg to then the skin hand. It made it really look like he almost had like... Skin glove sounds gross, and I don't want to say skin glove, but I know I did. But, you know, it almost seems like this is to disguise his actual robotic underneath. You know, no one's, you know, no one's suit comes right up to their hand and just cuts off like that, like a really hard cut. And obviously the hand is over the peg, you know, even in the design of it. And so... I ended up thinking that was really cool that he's, you know, much more cybernetic than maybe he looks because he has a suit on. But then you see these hands and you're like, oh, this is, you know, this is all synthetic. This is all fake. That's not, you know, a real person's hand. That's just a covering for, you know, whatever robot hand he has underneath. So it ended up creating a really cool look and I just fell in love with it. And so I didn't even like try to replace the pegs or anything. I was like, this is what I'm set on. I think it looks dope and is something really, really different. And it's funny that just, just the color of the peg will make so much difference in terms of the design. And now it looks, you know, robotic with a synthetic hand over it instead of, you know, actual flesh. And I think the fun part then is it makes you question like his other alternate heads or the heads he has. And, you know, are those just like a mask over whatever he actually is? Who knows? Who knows? But yeah. Anyways, that is really just an overview of the figure. Um, there, you know, I didn't do, I didn't do anything wacky and out of this world with this guy, but the goal for this one was making just a really, really clean assassin figure. I didn't want to make him too busy. And I think that was the tough thing with this guy was I originally had designed him with a bunch of crazy colors and stuff. And he was going to just, and he was going to be like a really, really bright almost obnoxiously bright colored figure. And then as I started fleshing him out more, I realized just that like, he should be a very concise leveled character. If I go too many crazy colors, if I do too much stuff on him, he'll look busy and obviously he'll look busy, but he will, 
feel cluttered. And so instead what I ended up doing is working with the different textures of black. You know, we have a black hard armor. We have, uh, you know, more of a glossy black leather jacket. Then we have a matte cloth. And then we also have another math cloth, but you know, we can see that their colors are different and obviously their textures are different. And so I ended up working with this guy and just sort of taking advantage of the different fabrics and such that were on him to, you know, create a very clean look, but a look where you can tell all the different segments of his body too. He doesn't look, he doesn't look muddled. I think if you use all the same fabric, all the same color on everything, a lot of the defining lines and stuff get lost and th these don't get lost on him at all the different textures and the different colors really just help break him up and just you know the hint of red just for that red arm or that right arm it is a red arm too but that right arm helps also give him that pop of color that he needs but it doesn't take over the whole design and it doesn't hurt the eyes it's very you know it's subtle and it fits with everything he has and obviously since we're going with a red motif you know, we bring red into the weapons as well, you know, into his pistol and into his rifle with the, if it'll focus, with the energy glow in both of them. And then, you know, following along with that, also his red eye. So, those were just some of my thoughts for the figure. I did want to go over the construction because I thought it was pretty interesting overall. And yeah, I thank you guys for watching. I know I said this was going to be quick and it turned out to be about like 26 minutes and it'll be like 27 by the time we finish. So I really appreciate you guys watching this. I hope, you know, this was informative and, you know, at least a little bit interesting maybe. And if so, if you could guys, you know, just drop a like on the video or, you know, comment something. It's always cool to interact with you guys and I always appreciate the support in any form it comes. Um, if you want to see more of what I do, and you want to see work in progress photos and updates and, you know, when I'm taking commissions and stuff like that, you should follow me on my Instagram. Uh, my username is Tosh underscore customs. I have my username in the description of all of my videos, including this one. And if you want a direct link, I do have a link in the about section on my channel page. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to update you on. Oh yeah, real quick. Um, I am reeling back my commission timeline a little bit it was originally supposed to reopen and in like the mid end of october and with foreseeable school stuff coming up if you guys don't know i'm a computer engineering student um with you know future stuff coming up especially with school online it's a little bit more difficult to balance like my school work stuff and school is just getting harder so i need to give more time to school so I am reeling back my commission time to what I'm estimating to be like November, December. And December is right before um, finals. But the idea is I open my commissions in like the middle end of November. We spend the beginning part of December, you know, whoever I end up working with, I, we use that time to pick up parts and to work out design finalizations of stuff. And then December winter break, is when I will be, you know, I'll have time and I'll be working, um, you know, back, you know, at Tosh Customs full time. So that's sort of my outline sort of for the rest of this year. And I wanted to let you guys in on why I ended up rolling back the date just so that, you know, it's not like I'm just making these arbitrary choices, but you actually understand why I'm doing what I do. So that's all I got for you. Thank you all for watching. Once again, you know, please like, comment, and subscribe, whatever you're supposed to do, what they say on YouTube. Please follow me on Instagram if any of this stuff interests you. And, you know, thank you for giving your time to this video. If you made it to the end, I appreciate every single one of you. And so I hope you enjoyed the review, and I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you later.